Thanks, everyone. Um, I think one thing that's uh, one way to kick this off is actually uh, when Ender called called us to uh, to ask if we wanted to be a part of this. Um, he told he, he told me about the the panel that we'd be on. He said that you know we'd be uh, we'd be talking. I'd be talking with uh, Coachella's head of innovation. I was like, Do you mean Sam? Uh, Sam Schoonover. He's like, Yeah. Do you know him? It's like, Yeah. We've been we've been talking for like two years. We've been trying two to like do work least. together for. For a little while, so this is uh, is a great moment. What were you working on when we first started talking, uh, and how has that changed? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, so Volta started as a VR tool for spatializing audio. It was actually a studio production tool, and it morphed into what it is now, which, for context, is a mixed reality creation platform. Um, it makes it really easy to make mixed reality performances that are audio reactive renders in real time, you can kind of think of it as like Legos for mixed reality aimed at musicians and, and performers. Uh, but at the time, it was, it was a VR app. Um, it was my thesis project in a master's program, and it was just an interface to make spatializing audio just way easier. Um, yeah, and I was trying to get you to figure out a way to get Coachella to use it at the time. I didn't really have a plan. And how's it evolved? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it went from being a studio production tool with a pretty, you know, finite use case to, um, to this, yeah, mixed reality creation engine and, and, um, you know, fortunately, we've been really fortunate to partner with the likes of, uh, Pixelinks and Ender, Ben, Dean, um, and, uh, and get some amazing artists starting to use, to use Volta. We've got, we've actually got, like, quite a few quite a big lineup of events this year of, of uh, festivals and shows and artists using Volta, which is super exciting. And, and what about you? How, uh, I, I mean, at Coachella, mixed reality kind of took a, a front stage. Um, what would you say you're most proud of from uh, this year's Coachella? Um, I would say we, I think one of the things we both share in common a lot is how to scale experiences online and how to create engaging music experiences virtually. Uh, one of the things that we did this year was we worked with the Epic Games team and used Unreal as a part of our live stream on YouTube and worked with Flume during his performance and recreated some of his like stage visuals and 3D space behind, above and around the festival stage. And I think that as music events become more of these hybrid experiences where people are on site at the festival seeing it and they're also at home and the at home audience continues to grow and becomes you know, two, three, five, ten 10 X bigger than what it is on site. Uh, artists want to create an experience that's like elevated for those people who are at home and give them something that people at the festival aren't able to see. And I know that's something that you've been thinking a lot about. And so I think it's a very exciting kind of next part of the evolution of, of performances at some of these big festivals and events. Um, and last night we were talking a little bit about the, the spectrum of music experiences. And I thought maybe you should talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, our thoughts uh, at Volta are, if, if you look at the trajectory of, you know, ex expectations, cultural expectations around uh, live music entertainment, live entertainment in general, we're, we've, you know, we've been, we started in, you know, with a focus on musical virtuosity, and that's kind of shifted over time to uh, a focus on the spectacle of the event. Um, and I'd say we're firmly sort of in that place. You know, if you look at, why people went to shows a hundred years ago? It was to, to uh, you know, predominantly to appreciate the musical virtuosity of the people performing. And now, you know, some of the biggest events in the world um, are these massive spectacles. And if you sort of take that to its logical extreme, and and where technology is going, um, the technology that you're implementing at Coachella, the technology that we're building at Volta, it, it the next kind of paradigm shift uh, is that experience itself becomes a canvas. Um, and that's led largely by uh, bringing interaction into um, these multidisciplinary mediums, this confluence of multidisciplinary mediums. So um, almost like 
Coachella and a James Terrell exhibit kind of combined together, but democ at a you know democratized level. That's at least what we're trying to do is is normalize experience uh, as a canvas, and you know Volta aims to be the the de facto paintbrush. Like we were talking about last night, I think that uh, from a live performance perspective, it already is interactive, right? And there is that, it's like a two-way street versus a one-way street. And so then the challenge is, is like how do you take some of those things that we all love and know so well about the live experience and, and recreate that in a, in a virtual or digital format, but not let that technology get in the way of the music experience itself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really easy to just use technology for technology's sake. Um, and when you do that, the technology does get in the way of the enjoyment of the experience. And so, like, what we are starting to do is, in, you know, we're doing, like, a pretty deep dive into the research of things like um, what people really enjoy about these unified experiences. Like, if you... As an example, if you like, if you think of like what applause is, you know, it's not the same behavior in aggregate. It's a feedback loop. Standing ovations is a good visual representation of this this sort of feedback loop. And so, like, understanding why these things happen and why we all feel the need to do these things and what enjoyment we get out of them is is kind of the the, the level of research that we are doing, and figuring out how we can we can you know take that understanding about live events. Um, and very thoughtfully uh, apply technology to it. So yeah, I mean, um, but and and okay, what would you say were were the biggest wins this year? Again, given that mixed reality uh, and tech was such like a significant focus at Coachella this year, and you 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 are the head of innovation at Coachella. What you know? Um, I would say another thing that we're excited about is going down this path of trying to figure out what a how Coachella should be expressed in, inside of a game. We did a partnership with Fortnite this year, and we had like music reactive outfits and in-game items. It was all very kind of s simple and straightforward, um, but we had their team on site and were able to like walk through all the different elements of what makes a music festival a festival and what makes Coachella Coachella in terms of um, how we are constantly thinking about elevating creatives, whether it's a musician or an art installation artist, how we're giving them a new, uh, or new opportunity to reach a new audience, and how we can recreate that inside a virtual world, I think is a, uh, Questions that, like, they're questions. We don't have answers yet. Um, but I think that that needs to be a part of it, right? Is, one, creating new mediums and formats for artists to express themselves, because at the end of the day, that's what Coachella is and what any music festival is, is just a, uh, a place for artists and fans to connect. And uh, if you don't re re recreate that digitally, then you're probably not doing the experience justice. Um, and I think giving artists a way to connect and a way to reach new audience is definitely uh, what we're most excited about. Uh, they're tough questions to answer, though. I don't think that anybody's quite got it yet. Yeah. Um, okay, well, what, like, top two or top three things are you definitely going to bring back next year that were, that were new this year? Uh, I would say everything that we did this year we'll be bringing back. So we, we did some partnerships with Niantic and with Instagram. We did uh, partnerships with Epic Games and Fortnite. We did an NFT partnership with FTX. Um, I'm missing something there, but we're, it's, it's all coming back bigger and better. And what new technology are you going to bring to Coachella this year, <laughs> next year? <laughs> I, I do think that there is a... Uh, when it comes to that new canvas for artists during their performance, there is always going to be a need for these like really in-depth experiences where you're recreating the visuals, like I said, um, in 3D space. And there's also going to be a need for like these more kind of programmatic tools for artists to come in and, and for us to be able to work with 15 different artists on one stage, taking just various elements of their performance or just, uh, you know, Revisualizing themselves digitally for like these live streams and then for the iMags that are at the festival site and so that's what you and I will definitely be talking about. How, how, do, how do you see it deployed at a music festival? 
So there are a few music festivals that um, are going to be using Volta in, uh, this summer. Uh, unfortunately, I really will be able to announce it in like a week. Uh, I wish we could announce it here. Sure you can't announce it right now? I can't announce it now. <laughs> Big ones. Um, uh, so, so yeah, Volta, I mean, the, the, the value propositions at like an artist or a technical level is, is that, you know, it make, Volta makes a, a 3D spatial world um, the, the content renders in real time because it's built in a game engine and it's all natively audio reactive. So it makes for, uh, it makes it pretty ideal for, for a festival environment. Um, one thing that we are going to be doing at a festival uh, this summer is, is something similar to what we did actually at the Brooklyn Mirage um, uh, with Anne Juna Deep in October. Um, uh, and, preaching to the choir here, I'm sure, but if you're not familiar with the Brooklyn Mirage, it's a fully projection mapped venue, 360 projection mapped all the way around. Um, and Volta can not only output you know, spatial content rendered in 2D, it can actually output uh, 360 video all rendered in real time. And so we, we wrapped the whole venue inside of a Volta world and had the music coming off the soundboard generating the visuals in, in real time. So um, we also, at the time, this was just a test, but we were, uh, we were streaming it to Twitch. Um, and we, it was also the first test of audience, remote audience interaction features. Um, and what that looks like, uh, and if you, if you come by, uh, we're doing a, an intro, a demo at 1.30 or 1.40 today. If you want to see Volta, um, definitely come and check it out, but I'll, we'll also be showing uh, the prototype of, of this feature. Essentially, we've turned the chat window in different 2D streaming platforms into ways to control the visual content. And so um, that works both on a live stream and, in, and in, in venue. And so we did this at the Brooklyn Mirage. We only gave it to 20 or 30 people. Um, but essentially, you could type in the words Volta, Brooklyn, and Mirage into Twitch. And if you typed in Volta, this ripple shot out around everyone in the venue. If you typed in Brooklyn, there was this like particle burst on one side of the venue. And if you typed in uh, Mirage, there was like this cool tessellation effect on the other side of the venue. Um, and so we gave it to one of our investors. Uh, we're based in London. Uh, and so he, from London, he was having some control over the walls of the Brooklyn Mirage via, via Twitch. That's like those... Um when if the metaverse is about like combining physical and digital as a kind of de definition that's like one of those kind of metaverse sync moments you know where people online are able to affect the physical experience we think a lot about that um twitch open api right that's what it is that you're using yeah we're just yeah. using public api data yeah. like yeah. nothing that no one else can can get there's no yeah special secret sauce there love it uh I think the the more that we, as at Coachella, that the more that we can let people who are online and not at the festival affect the festival, or at least interact and engage with people who are there, the more they feel as if they had that Coachella experience without like buying a ticket or flying there, which I think is a big a big goal. That kind of scaling. Um, I'm curious though. We are uh, in a Web three day. Are you guys? How are you thinking about Web three? Yeah. So. Uh, it, we are definitely uh, we we definitely have like a tra like a plan and a trajectory in that direction and kind of the nuance that we take with it is you know you can uh, you know very easily create you know visual content that you could you know mint in some way out of Volta um, but the way that we we would plan to approach it um, is that you would effectively be able to um, mint the interactive metadata in Volta. And so what that means is when, when you make content in Volta, you know, the output of that is gonna be on a screen somewhere or at some point in, in VR or AR or something like that. Um, for now, while it's still kind of rendered on a screen, you, know, you, you have this 2D output, but the, the, the you know, the platform, the engine that we've built is still actually making the full 3D world 
um, and it's and it's uh, it's really just combining a lot of instructions and a lot of media to to kind of put this world together. So uh, when we are ready to kind of go down that route, the thing that you will be able to mint is actually the interactive metadata of of that world. Um, it essentially, you know, and as a performer uses it, and as they, they mint that experience, they're effectively minting a moment in time. They're minting the experience itself. That's how, how we approach it. We are, yeah, we are two sides of the same coin or the same token, I suppose, uh, because when it comes to the when it comes to the content and the media, we're very motivated to give attendees at the festival or at any event the ability to capture that moment in time to feel some sort of ownership over like whatever emotion they were having while they were there. Uh, and then I think on, on our end, it's about the utility of that token and what kind of uh, access it grants you to whatever it may be. We have this ability to build this Disneyland of music experience and we can build whatever it is we want and so when it comes to tokens as access to something whether that is the festival itself or some exclusive event inside the festival or some sort of other loyalty type of benefit uh, that's what kind of like the hard production work of of making that token worth something. S speaking to that, actually, um, and this is actually something I meant to ask you about uh, last night, was mm -hmm. um, the, the NFT project that you launched in advance of Coachella and like the, the access that that, um, that that gives, can you can you elaborate on, on that? I mean, yeah. Yeah, we did uh, the first collection of NFTs that we launched with FTX, who was the NFT partner for Coachella this year. One of them was a um, 10 lifetime guest passes to Coachella, which is something that we had we had done through a sustainability program called Carpool Cella, uh, but it's very complicated. Like it's like, you have to name, there's a lot of contracts. If you don't want to go anymore, then you just kind of like leave that on the table, um, and NFTs are a great way for us to do something like lifetime passes for the first time, and give people the ability to buy something that has like real lifetime value. I think one of the important things that I read about NFTs and value was make sure that the NFT that you are, are selling gives the buyer immediate long-term value as, uh, as much as possible, like more value than what they paid for it. And so that was a way for us to do that. And it was a way for us to uh, give actual tickets to the festival that people, if they don't want to go anymore, they can then resell those to somebody else. Uh, and I think it was a really interesting use case for NFTs. And it definitely was like picked up a lot in, in press and kind of just publicly. And a lot of people were um, kind of seeing the value of, of the utility that NFTs can uniquely provide. That's very cool. Um, do you, uh, is there any concern with that, that like because, because the, you know, the agreement, the smart contract effectively like lasts in perpetuity, like is, is there ever kind of like a concern with Coachella um, or anything that you're working on that, you know, a day will come that that can't be honored? Like, um, like how do you kind of consider those sorts of questions? Yeah, I think good questions for the lawyers who yeah, thought very, sorry to put that spot. No, no, thought very long and hard about all of that. And of course, there are terms and conditions and stuff to, you know, on our end, it's up to us to fulfill that because these are the ten biggest Coachella fans of all time. And I think it's uh, we are motivated to continue to give them access to more things, especially digital experiences, as we continue to build those out and can use these tokens as a way to gate access to those things. Um, but yeah, there are, there's always, you know, worst case scenarios like pandemics that will stop Coachella from happening. Yeah, fair enough. In which case, you know, we need to um, maintain that relationship with these people and make sure that they feel like they are still being like rewarded for their loyalty, I suppose. That's a good answer to that question. <laughs> um, cool. I mean, like, what other, uh, we've got, we, we only have a couple of minutes. Uh, like, is there, is there anything that you wish you could have brought to Coachella this year that, that you didn't? Either the tech isn't there, the business case wasn't there, whatever mm. reason. Hmm. Hmm. Um... I would say uh, we're we are definitely thinking about kind of 
the like further tokenification of the experience. Uh, NFTs are one thing, like the social tokens and using tokens as a way to uh, reward people for participating or engaging with certain things on side of the festival is another. Uh, a lot more complicated to pull off and there's like this whole question of like how to manage an economy that you know people like Ender and the Pixel Links team I'm sure are thinking a lot about like is no easy feat, right? Uh, and I and I think um, that's probably a path that will go down eventually. But this year was too short of a timeline. What about you? What do I wish was brought to Coachella? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Volta. Um, but uh, no, I mean, for us, we're pretty. Um, I mean, we have we have a pretty incredible team, and I and. You know, we're we're making some pretty like bleeding edge tech. Um, it's it's hard to find interactive audio mixed reality developers, but you know our CTO has sure. 13 years experience, and he brought a black book of pretty amazing people. So, you know, the 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 tech that that we're building is you know I I do feel uh, uh, honored to work with the people. That I that I do, I really think they're kind of pushing the limits of like what game engines can do, and and you know, effectively in democratizing uh, the use of it, essentially kind of mitigating the complexity um, and mitigating the costs, right? Like that's that's really our goal is to to put artists first, and um, you know, again, come at 1:30 or 1:40, I forget what time it's at. Um, and, and check it out, but like we are really trying to democratize, um, to democratize all this tech, and and I think we're yeah we're doing a pretty good job. I, I would agree. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you, guys.